the whole idea of a, of a film scanner for the AACA library really began maybe five years ago. We have a, a huge collection of 16 millimeter films mm -hmm. in our library. Uh, these, these films have traditionally been lent out to one of our many regions and chapters scattered all across the, the world. And uh, obviously, even 30 years ago, 16 millimeter film projectors pretty yeah. much became obsolete. So, so we had this problem of all these films and, and no easy way to watch them, basically. Yeah. So we set up the film projector, put it on a nice clean screen, set up a camera and recorded in real time. Uh, this gave people the opportunity to watch these videos and at that point we did maybe about 15, 20 or so like this. Um, the main issue though is that we really wanted something with archival quality to it if we were going to start preserving these films. Yeah, and it, even when Mike started we had already been thinking about writing a grant to get these digitized. So then we settled on what is kind of, it's basic, but kind of outdated technology, uh, which is just a telescene machine. Mm -hmm. And the way that works is pretty simple. The film projector broadcasts into a box, and inside that box you have uh, different cameras and whatnot to record that image and, and make it digital. Mm -hmm. um, a solution? Yes. It was a solution that would cost us about $5,000, and um, we were going to go with that. Yeah, to be, to be quite honest with yeah, you. Yeah, that, that seemed like the best option at the time, and, and as far as we knew, that was the only option that was attainable. <laughs> yes. Until one day. Yeah, until um, Chris was messing around on the internet. <laughs> yeah, we were literally sitting down to write the grant for the for the Telesee machine, and I thought, uh, it's been a couple years since I really investigated this. Maybe by some miracle, there's some better solution that's uh, more affordable and yeah, uh, or even just better a better, a just, better yeah. option. I just remember Chris going, "Hey, hey, guys, come look at this <laughs> <Yeah>. from his desk." <laughs> I drink coffee, which is a is a bad idea, and I think it might have even been a, a Friday afternoon. So <laughs> yeah. you got the excitement of the weekend, and then you throw in some coffee, and yeah. it's a potent little uh, recipe there. <laughs> but we hit that we hit the weekend on a high note though, because yeah. we were all like, "Dude, this is cool. This is if we can do this, this is going to be awesome." Yeah, and and that that sparked it, and it really did kind of snowball from there, like. It seems like that was just yesterday, like it snowballed really yeah. quickly. Yeah, it's been what now, like 18 months, 16 yeah, months? Yeah, almost. Before we started the whole the whole project, from when we said, we're going to do this, we're going to crowdfund it, we're going to yeah. go meet Matthew. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, headed out to Brooklyn. And then he ran it for a, a few seconds. Now he had one of the, I think he had a fully mechanical camera on it. Yes. So he wasn't going to let it run for, you know, hours. Yeah, he wasn't going to kill his camera or anything. A bunch of minutes, but. But he wanted to prove to us that it worked, which was nice. Because <laughs> we wanted to see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to ask some questions, uh, sp some really specific questions about the build that weren't necessarily addressed in the Instructables. Yeah. We left Brooklyn feeling a little, like, good, yeah. but also, like, Again, that weight was like back on us. It was like, all right, yeah. now everything's in front of us, and we just need to do it. Yeah, because again, this would this would have been the first we really discovered that Matthew even didn't do any kind of scanning on a large scale. Yeah. So we would be the first to be doing anything longer longer than a couple minutes. Yeah. And uh, we were guinea pigs, but we yeah. were game for it. Chris did a lot of that initial build, and he kind of flew through it. Like I think. We started on like a Thursday or Friday, and he was like, oh, I'll work on this again on Saturday. And like yeah. when we came in, because he doesn't work on Mondays, when me and Matt came in, it was like almost full built. And we were like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice change of pace for us, too, since yeah. we're so used to doing library stuff. You know, now we get to tinker around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a, a motivating factor every once yeah. in a while. So we set it up. We kind of, we, we didn't, I didn't even think we had a camera at this point. We were just kind of setting it up and making sure that everything moved and yeah. did what it kind of needed to do. So at that point we had like our first run and we were very excited that everything did kind of what it was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, we're like, that. yeah. <laughs> but we got the camera, we, we put it on and yeah, I don't, from there it was the build was kind of done, which was nice. Yeah, the build was done and then it the was build software was tweaking and machine tweaking yeah. ultimately. Yeah, how'd you get in here anyway? Oh, we drove in. We can drive right out. We will when we get ready. I think up until that point we we basically weren't using a gate because we just we didn't figure it out yet or we couldn't figure out how to get it easy in there and out there and how to apply the right kind of a pressure so at that point we were still like in testing mode and but once it started once the stabilization and stuff started coming together we we're like all right we need to we need to finally sort this out and, yeah. and Doug came along and kind of saved us at that point which was nice uh, he's a very hands-on kind of guy so um, I think at first he kind of chuckled to himself and think these yeah. guys are never gonna make this. Yeah. And then I think he was pretty impressed. I think he was too. So, quick. Yeah. Um, so we had the issue where the, the gate had a sliding and how 
and uh, I don't have a lathe or any kind of milling machine, but luckily Doug did. So he was able to make a little apparatus out of a small hunk of aluminum yeah. that allowed us to slide the gate in and out. From about that time till maybe like September of October, it was just a constant, I don't want to say battle, but kind of a constant battle to figure out how to get this thing stabilized the best way and the most efficient way possible. Um, and that was kind of tough. The way that the, the rolling shutter, the CMOS shutter works is it worked from a, basically like a top down. So it takes the picture at the top and scrolls downwards. Um, our film was coming in from the other way. So it was basically doing like a drag as it goes through. So we were getting like almost like a parallelogram shape, not super skewed, but enough where it was, you know, a little tweak. And um, that was a big thing because when we had to stabilize, we not only had to stabilize up and down now, we also had to stabilize that left and right wobble. So we, uh, we changed the way that the, the camera kind of sat on the machine. Um, if we change that to the same way that the film is moving to a right angle, there's less distortion. We, we talked about it a little bit, but at one point Mike just came up with the idea that the easiest way to extract sound rather than using that software might be to just run the, the, uh, the film through a, a, a projector that has a dedicated audio out. Yeah. And uh, we found a projector from probably the, the mid to late 80s. We found it on eBay. Mm -hmm. uh, it had been professionally refurbished. Yeah, restored or whatever you want to yeah. phrase it. So it was, it was essentially as modern as a projector as you could possibly get mm -hmm. at, at this point. And um, yeah, we got it. Mike uh, rigged up a system where the audio out from the projector goes into a mixer box. And that, that mixer box can just be plugged into the computer and... It's, it runs real time, so if, yep. the, if the film's 12 minutes, it takes 12 minutes to extract the, the audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike finds, he loops it the proper way, he finds yeah. the first talking point, and, and stops at the last. EC, welcome back to Daytona Beach, Florida. Don, you're looking good, and it's the weather and the atmosphere agrees with you like nobody's business. Glad to see you. Well, it's good to see you again, EC. Now, what are your plans for this year? So the, the machine was basically as good as it was going to get. Um, I still felt like it was good, it might not be the best, but at that point it was, it was a product that we could be alright with. This was around October-ish. Yeah. Um, we were going to have our big kind of unveiling, um, October, the, the first week uh, of October is the big uh, car show here for AACA's Hershey Fall Meat Week. It's our biggest, busiest week of the year. Um, we were planning to have a, a, a kinograph unveiling for donors and, and anyone that's kind of helped us out over the over the course of this project, you know. Yeah. So so we had this big thing. We did a little mini presentation, and um, we were at this point where it was like, all right, well now what? Um, Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone was very impressed with what we were doing. Yeah. Had but, we stopped there, everybody would have said, whoa, phenomenal job, guys. Yeah. This is a great machine. Yeah. But as we got back, like, that whole week, I was just like, ah, it, was, it felt like um, it was the best it was going to get. You know what I mean? And, and not that I felt, like, defeated, but I was kind of like, all right, well, this is, this is, unless we fundamentally change how this machine's done, this is what it's going to be. And it still looked good. It wasn't... Uh, I'll admit, and I even admitted then, it wasn't like A-plus material, it wasn't the greatest thing ever, but you could watch it and not be distracted, yeah. and it would be totally okay. And I remember like when we first were starting to build this, um, I said to Chris, I was like, oh, I wonder like why there's not a mechanism to make the film like stop on every frame, you know what I mean, just to make yeah. a, a more solid thing. And, I pushed for that idea, like I wanted it to happen, and, and since then I had bought my own little Arduino and was kind of tinkering at home and learning a little bit more about it, and, and I came across these things called stepper motors, some people call them step motors, and um, at that point I was like, wait, this this might be the key. So uh, I started messing with that, and you can basically program it to like go in succession every so often it'll stop and basically just keep rotating so it'll go in a, a certain amount of time. That was the the backbone of it. Was like we could we can get this the film to stop at each at each break at each frame, and then take the next one stop frame next one stop frame image blah blah blah. To me, that was the way to get this where I wanted it to be. Little did I know that that was gonna be like a whole nother <laughs> thing. It was another one of those like here's the wall. Now we got a downhill a little bit and then another wall. If we were moving the film with that motor. <clears throat> 
the film had nowhere to go. Uh, initially, the motor that was like essentially the take-up reel is what powered the whole machine. And because of that variable kind of speed that that reel goes, we couldn't just set that at a speed and let it take it in because eventually it was going to be too fast for that motor and then we could essentially rip the film like if there's too much yeah. tension. The way it goes, the speed increases as the as it goes, as it builds up along that reel. So we would have to come down every hour or so, turn it down a little couple notches, turn down the speed. That was the, that was kind of where like, maybe this is why it never worked. Like that, <laughs> I, we hit that and I was like, this is probably why it never got to this idea of like the, the stop, the, the stepper motor kind of pushing this machine. And uh, we tried many things. Like we had a bunch of ideas. Like we we're like, oh, we, we would just do really slow. So it'll like <laughs> take it. Maybe we can make like it really long. So that it's like got this, all this extra thing to go. And I think we had, we, basically there was a lot of like random ideas that were thrown around. <laughs> So this guy, Jack, who used to be an engineer for somewhere in Harrisburg, um, came by and he was looking at the machine. He was like, oh, this is really neat. And I was like, oh, thanks. And we're going over the different things and telling him about it and back and forth. And he was like, all right, well, how does, what are you trying to do? And I told him the new thing and he was like, okay, well, let's try this. And he gave me all these ideas. And a lot of what he was saying was kind of like when I, how I feel like Chris and Matt feel like when I'm talking to them about <laughs> stuff, like he was saying things and it was just like, <laughs> like I understood what he was getting about, but I didn't really understand how to implement it or anything. But uh, he was like, all right, you can use the dancer arms the whole time. And I was like, all right, well, how's that going to work? He's like, well, you know, I get that switch on the, the roller to take the picture. I was like, yeah, he's like, use something like that, but connect it to the motor so that when the tension's too tight, it'll turn off the motor. And I was like, okay, that, that kind of made sense. Not sure, again, I don't know how it's gonna work or how I'm gonna do it, but the idea was there. It was, I, I wrote it down, it was on paper. Um, there was a guy, Rick, who works here in the office, he used to be an electrician and stuff, so I talked to him a little about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, that, that should work. So I rigged up the motor with just a switch and you could turn it on and off. And I was like, all right, well, that works. So in theory, this should work. Um, but now that the problem was, we had the idea that the springs were going to basically relieve tension and, and pull on that film. But how do I get that to s hit this switch? Um, and to me, it just, it, it, for a while, it just wasn't making sense. Every kind of way I did it, it just like didn't click. And then one morning it just did. I don't know what it was. I looked at it the wrong way or something and it kind of caught my eye. And I was like, oh, and then I turned <laughs> it around and, and literally I was like, Chris, I got it. <laughs> and then I was like, give me five minutes. And then, uh, so I rigged it up and it was, again, it was kind of rudimentary at the point, but, uh, but it worked and I was like, all right, this is, this is the solution. And, and from there it was just kind of like little tweaks here and there, but, but from that point it felt like we're on to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He did a phenomenal job. I mean, just he's skipping over a lot of stuff, but he had a, we needed a whole new 3d printed roller. So Mike sat down and figured out how to use 3d printed software and uh, sent out for a couple new rollers. So it's a lot easier. There was a lot more involved in yeah. it's just saying, <laughs> oh, we decided to go from this motor to, uh, you know, to the final product. And uh, software side, that killed a lot of time. It took a whole like two steps off of the processing. Um, now I only had to worry about um, basically just the Y axis um, when stabilizing. So I didn't have to worry about wobble. I didn't have to worry about anything. The frames were steady. It was it was bang on. It was it was ridiculous. <laughs> it turned like an eight hour project to get a, a five minute, ten minute video turned around to, you know, like half that and maybe even less than half of that time. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think that this project for this specific library has worked out better than I had hoped. Yeah. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, but again, we I think we were really lucky with not only the materials and tools that we had at our disposal, but just uh, you know the way Mike thinks about certain things, and even to a certain extent, the way you know I, I thought yeah, about the yeah, totally, totally. I just think that we had a, a good combination of skills, and yeah, and we're thrilled with our movie machine now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Chris likes to tout that I did a lot of the work and stuff, but some of that building stuff I probably could have figured out, but it wouldn't have been as second nature as it was to you. <laughs> like, yeah. like you were doing stuff, and was like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I was like, ah." <laughs> It's the first time I'm hearing that, so it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> like he was doing the tapping stuff and doing all like, I was like, ah, okay, that makes sense. So stay tuned. I think as we make, if we make improvements to the machine down the road, we'll share those. Mm -hmm. um, 
again, as we add new films to YouTube, you're going to hear about that. And if there's any organizations or even individuals out there who are thinking about making a machine for yourself, give us a call. If you're in Hershey area, stop by, take a look yeah. at it. We're proud yeah. of the machine and, and willing to talk about it. Definitely. Thanks. Thanks.